Hey, it's Stacey and I'm so excited to show you how to finish off your quilt top using our mystery block of the month blocks that we've been making throughout the year. And what we're going to do is add sashing and borders with cornerstones and I think it turned out really neat. Take a look. First thing I did when I picked the fabric for my sashing and my borders was I auditioned it. Now I've just used fabric that I had already but what I did was I just grabbed a few blocks and I had a look at how they were going to work with my fabric. For example I did want to use this fabric for my sashing and then use something darker for my borders. However this fabric was just too close to this green for me. Like if I fold it over I just felt that there wasn't enough contrast between the two. So then I decided to use this really pale peach colour as my sashing and then to use the fabric that I wanted to use as my sashing as my border. And I think that's going to work. For my cornerstones, and those are the little corners that will go between all the sashings, I'm just going to be using my leftover fabric that I used for my blocks and I'll just be using all my light ones that I used. So if we just take a look at my picture here, what we're doing now is we're going to do the sashing. So that's the first border you can see around each block here. And what it is, is it's made up of four pieces. And then we have the cornerstones in each of the four corners. But what we do to make that is we're going to make the rows. And then what we'll do is we'll sew the sides on to each of the blocks joining the blocks. So what we'll do is we'll make the sashing rows. And then we will attach the sashing to the sides of the blocks joining the blocks and then we'll join all the rows together. So the first thing we need to do before we get started is just to square up all our blocks and they should measure 12 and a half inches squared. If they don't you will need to cut them all down to the smallest size. The best way to do that, let's say you need to cut them all down a quarter of an inch, the best thing to do would be to take a little bit off each side so you don't end up with the centre sort of out of place. And if they were all perfect but you only had one that was short by a quarter inch, I would consider redoing that one block so you don't have to cut all the others down to the smallest size. But in order to do our sashing, we do need all our blocks to be exactly the same size because when we do our sashing, we'll be cutting the sashing to the width of our fabric. So now for our sashing, we need to cut our strips and I've already cut some here and we cut them as wide as our blocks. So mine are 12 and a half inches wide. Yours might be slightly smaller depending on what size you just cut them all down to and then we're going to cut them at two inches wide and we need to cut 31 of them so what I'm going to do is take my fabric cut it at 12 and a half inches wide and then cut all my two and a half inch strips from that So now I have 31 sashing strips cut at 12 and a half inches by 2 inches and then I also cut my cornerstones and they are 2 inches by 2 inches and you need to cut 20 of those. So we're going to start off by doing our sashing rows and we need to do 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and what I've done is I've put them into groups here so we need 3 pieces of our sashing and 4 cornerstones and we need 5 groups of them. So then I'll just take my first group that I've got here and I will take a cornerstone and the edge and I'm going to line them all up nicely. Remembering they're only two inches so we, we really want to get this nice and accurate. We don't want to be off by let's say an eighth of an inch because it does really put you off when you're sewing such small pieces together. So I've got right sides of the fabric together here and I'm just going to sew along that edge. I've got my quarter inch foot on and I'm going to stitch it stitch length two. I'm using my Aurifil thread. Just trimming that thread. So now I've got my first one. I'm going to come along and attach my next cornerstone. Right sides together making sure all those edges are lined up really nicely. Coming 
off the edge, opening it up, taking my next piece of sashing, placing it right sides together and so on until I've used up my little pile which included three pieces of sashing and four cornerstones. Okay, so that was my last cornerstone in this set. So as you can see, I've got a long strip now, which is my first row for my sashing. I'm going to carry on now and sew the remaining four together. If you wanted to, you could use pins. I didn't worry about it, but it definitely does help with accuracy. So if you're having trouble, definitely use pins. And you might also want to chain piece them together, which would be a lot quicker. This was just the best way for me to show you how to do it. So now, Carry on and sew all five rows together. So you'll have five sets and what we're going to do is just set the stitches and then we're going to press the seams away from the cornerstone. So I'll just give that a finger press and press. I'll find the next cornerstone, set those stitches and then I'm going to press them away from the cornerstone. So towards the sashing. And I'll repeat that until I've pressed all the seams for all five sashing rows. So now what I'm gonna do is sew my blocks together with the sashing, creating our rows with the blocks. But before this step, I laid all my blocks out on my bed, three across and four down, and I just checked that I was happy with the placement of them, and I just shuffled them around until I was happy. So now what we're going to do is we'll do each row, and we'll have four rows in total, and we're going to sew a piece of sashing to the side, and then we'll be sewing these two pieces together with the sashing in the middle, these two pieces together with the sashing in the middle, and one last piece of sashing on the far right hand side. And then I'll sew all four rows together, just like this. So I've popped all my pieces in a pile here and I'll start off with this first sashing that's going on the far right hand side. And I am just gonna flip it over because I wanna sew with all my seams on the top so I can check that they are being stitched down nicely. And I'm just gonna line up the edges on one corner Pop a pin in and then come down to the bottom corner, line up the edges, pop another pin in and then I will just put one in the middle there. Stitching just like usual. You can see that seams coming up so I'm just going to stop and Put it back under my foot. Trimming my thread. Finding the side, taking the next piece of sashing and sewing that on. Once I've sewn that on, opening it up and then sewing the next piece on and so on until I've sewn all the pieces together. So we're going to set the stitches on each of the seams and then we're going to press towards the sashing. So just giving it a finger press and then a press. And then just coming along to each of the sashings and doing the same. And I'll repeat this for all four rows. So now what we're going to do is sew our sashing rows to our block rows and we're going to start with the sashing row at the top then we'll sew another sashing row down the bottom and then we'll join another block row, sashing row, block row and so on until we've sewn all four rows together including a sashing row at the top and the very bottom. 
So what I'm going to do is take this and find the first seams that need to be nested. So they're right sides together. I'm just opening it up and making sure those seams are lining up really nicely. Oh, I could feel that it moved there. Then what I'm going to do is come along and find the next sashing that's coming down, joining the blocks together, and my cornerstone, and I'm going to nest those seams on both sides. Find the next cornerstone and the next sashing piece coming down and nest those seams. And then the last one. Then what I'll do is just come to the middle here, approximately the middle of each block, and just pull it so that it's all sitting nicely lined up. Line up those edges and just pop another pin in in the middle. If you'd like to, you could do two pins. Making sure these edges are lined up nicely. just going to sew along that edge just like we have been. Okay, so just trimming the threads and what I will do is I will press each seam as we go just so it's easier to work with. So setting those stitches again all the way along, opening it up and we will press the seams towards the sashing. And now what I'll do is I'll add the next sashing row along here, then I'll add my block and so on until I've attached all my rows. So now we've sewn all our rows together. We've got what looks like our completed quilt top, but we are gonna add a border. So you might need to square off the edges. Mine were all fine. We did have just the sashing and then these cornerstones. It was such a small amount of sewing. I think you'll find they're fine. But if you need to, just go around and check them that they don't need to just be tidied up. Now for the borders, I've cut five three inch strips from the width of fabric and my width of fabric actually fits across the whole top here which means I'm not going to have to join it when I'm going across the top. I will have to join it for the two sides. If your fabric is not long enough you'll need to then cut six pieces of fabric and join it to make it long enough. So I've got two pieces here for the top and bottom and then for the sides I've actually got three pieces here and I've joined them together with a diagonal seam because I prefer a diagonal seam when it's not part of the pattern and I've got a YouTube video on that I'll put the link above if you need it so I just joined three strips there so three strips with two diagonal joins so I'll pop those aside now I've got my two strips here, which will be for the top and bottom. Oh, sorry, I forgot to mention the cornerstone. So you'll need four cornerstones, cut it three inches by three inches squared. I'll also pop them to the side. So with my two pieces, I'm just going to line them up on a seam somewhere in the middle of my quilt, because if we use the bottom or the top edge, sometimes it's a little bit warped and we get the best measurement more in the middle of the quilt. Just gonna move it over here so I don't have my salvages in it. So I've lined it up on a seam so it's nice and straight. We don't want it a little bit crooked. We want it nice and straight and we just want it nicely smoothed out. We're not pulling it really taut and we don't have it all loose with wrinkles. It's just really nicely, evenly spread out. I'm going to cut off the excess on this side. Then I'll just shimmy my mat across and then cut the excess off the side as well. This 
So now I've got my borders for my top and bottom. I'm just going to set them aside. And now we need to do exactly the same thing for the sides. Now it's a bit bigger, so I will have to shuffle around my gear. All right, so it does still fit on my table, which is handy. So I've got my three pieces here that I've sewn together. I'm just going to double them up. And I'm going to cut two at a time. Again, I'm going to find a seam. I'm just going to bring that. Oh. No, nope, I'm not going to use that seam. I'm going to use this middle seam here. I'm going to line them up on the seam. Okay, and once you're happy that they're folded in half nicely, so all the edges are lined up, smoothed out, we'll just trim the excess off. So I'll just find my mat again. that excess off, shimmy it over to the other side, and trim that excess off, all right let's sew our borders on. So now I'm going to attach the border, I'm sorry you can't quite see the full quilt here, but I'm going to attach the border on the longer sides first, so those are the pieces that have the join in them. What I'm going to do is fold it in half, my piece of border here, and then finger press it in the centre, and then I'm going to find the centre of my quilt, which is right here in the middle of my cornerstone, and place that finger press fold on in the middle of my cornerstone here. And I'm going to face it right sides together. And then I will just pop a pin in. Making sure the edges are lined up nicely. Then what I'll do is I'll just bring it across. And you can't quite see this, so I'll just shimmy it across. And I'll line up all the edges on this corner so at the top and on the side and then i will pop pins in all along however many you'd like i do recommend pinning at this point and however many you put in is just a personal preference. Then what I'll do is just move it over to the other side and do exactly the same thing. Of course, I've made sure my quilt's all smoothed out nicely. I'm just gonna find that those two edges there, make sure they're nicely lined up, pin, line up all the edges and then pin now what i'm going to do is i'm going to sew down this entire edge and then i'm going to come back and do exactly the same to the other side just trim my threads and now I'm going to do exactly the same to the other long side. So now I'm just going to set my stitches along that whole seam and then I'm going to press it towards the border. Okay, and I'll do that for both sides along the whole edge. Something I did forget to mention was when we are doing the sashing, 
I press the seams in towards the sashing for all of the rows that we did. Okay, now let's finish off our borders. So now I've got the two pieces left for my borders on the top and the bottom. I'm just going to sew my cornerstones onto them. So I'm going to take my cornerstone and I'm going to line up the edges on the side and at the top and the bottom. Right sides together and I will just pop in a couple of pins because I want them to be really accurate. And for my cornerstones, I actually just used my leftover lighter fabric. So now I'm just going to sew those two seams. Trimming the thread. And then I'm just going to come along to the bottom and do exactly the same thing. Okay, trimming those threads and now let's press them open. So we'll just set the stitches and then we're going to press the seams towards the border, so away from the cornerstone. And we'll do that for both sides. So now I'm going to attach my border, instead of starting in the middle and working our way out, I'm going to find the cornerstone seam. So I'm going to line up the edges here to find those seams where the cornerstones line up. And then I'm just going to nest them. And then I'm going to come over to this side and do exactly the same. And then I'm just gonna make sure all these edges are lined up nicely, that my quilt is spread out nicely. And then once I'm happy, I'm just gonna pop pins in along this whole edge and then sew and press towards the border on both sides and then we've finished off our quilt top. our finished quilt top don't forget to give the whole quilt top a good press cut off all those loose threads and underneath cut off any thread that's showing through particularly on your lighter fabrics maybe you've used a darker thread one thing to note is on the half square triangles if they're on the corners they can be a bit stretchy because they're cut on the bias to help you with that you could add starch now please excuse my voice I've been struggling with a cold all week but I'm so grateful that we did manage to make it through and record this video. I hope you've enjoyed the process of the mystery block of the month. If you have enjoyed it, please leave a comment and let me know if you'd like to do it again next year, because with the comments, that's how I decide what exactly we'll be doing for each of our projects. Thanks so much and I'll see you again next week.